Adam Trigger here, back with another college basketball preview. And this is an exciting day for me because I get to bring in my friend and wager talk host, Joe Ranieri. Joe, you're always on this side. First, I got to give you credit. I've been doing these with a guest. It's hard to be a host and you just kill it every time and always make it look so easy. But you get to be the guest today and I get to just throw questions at you. So uh, welcome in. And how do you feel about uh, being in this chair today? Uh, yeah, it's a little, uh, it's a little freaky. I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna lie here, <laughs> Trig. But uh, you got me talking about my favorite college basketball team, so you knew I was gonna show up here. Joe, I want to know if you're comfortable. So, I feel like you're the representative of the Miami Hurricanes community that I think owes me an <laughs> apology, and I want to see if you're, if you're willing to apologize on behalf of all Miami fans. Last year, I gave out. Kansas State plus three when we were in the Bahamas. And I made this case mm -hmm. that Miami was not the same team. They were not as good as the Final Four team. I didn't think they had enough shot making. I didn't think they had the interior play. I felt like Norchad Omir was undersized at the five. And Miami won that game when we were in the Bahamas. And the Miami fans came for me. Five and O oh star. Yeah. And I said, just wait. It's coming with this team. And I turned out to be right. So I just I I turned out to be right. Miami yep. kind of went off the rails last year. That just wasn't much of a team. I felt like it was a lot of individuals playing for themselves. So the question I'll ask you is this. You don't have to apologize on behalf of the Miami fans. I'm okay. I don't need the apology. But I'll ask you this. Do you think, guys, because they lose a lot of talent. Norchad Omir, mm -hmm. Wuga Poplar, Keish Keyshawn George, Bensley Joseph. Those are really good players. Do you think it's a little bit of addition by subtraction for Miami this year? Well, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot going on with this Miami team. I mean, when you think about, Trig, the University of Miami, it was a couple of years ago. We were cashing tickets in a tournament left and right backing Miami when nobody wanted them, and they made it to the final four. But you have to understand, that was, two, that was 2023, guys. There is one remaining player on the University of Miami from that Final Four team, and that is Nigel Pack. They have 11 new faces on this roster. They have a top 10 recruiting class. This, for all purposes here, Trig, is a completely different Miami team from the one that made the Final Four just a couple of years ago. So they it was going to happen. They missed the tournament last year. It was unfortunate, but as – undersized as they were and to your point the lack of shooting they also had some of the most unbelievable injury luck i have ever seen in one season so if they got all of that out of the way last year and we don't get any injuries this year i think we're we're talking about a different miami hurricanes team altogether joe i accept the apology from the miami fan base and i hope they let mm -hmm. me join them this year because I really yes. like this Miami team. You know, you talked about all the guys that, you know, the turnover on this roster, the fact that Nigel Pack Whew. is the only one back from the team two years ago. But I really think that this is the perfect mix of having a little bit of continuity with Pack and Matthew Cleveland back, and then just yep. hitting home runs all over the transfer portal with who they brought in and, and how sort of Larinaga constructed the team this year. What I love is the two mid-majors they brought in and the mm -hmm. mid-major players they brought in. That's A.J. State and McCray and Jalen Blackman. The reason I like this so much is because you don't always get the mid-major coming to power conference program and it working out, especially in year one. But these are two instances where I could think it could work out right away. The reason why is you have Blackman, who's just an incredible shot maker. He knows how to score in a multitude of different ways. And you know what? It's still around. I don't care if you're in the Atlantic Sun, ACC. It's still a round ball, round basket. It's the same game. That dude can make shots, and I fully expect him to make shots in, you know, for this team. Does he? Is he going to score 21 points a game for Miami? I don't know, but you, know, the, you could make the counter argument. Does he need to score that many? A.J. State and McCray from Stanford was in the rare scenario where he was on a mid-major team, Joe, that didn't really – rely on one or two or three guys. That was a really deep Samford yep. team. And so he was almost like a kind of a role. I don't know if he was a role player, but he certainly wasn't a guy that was overly relied upon that's now coming and needing to be the guy on an ACC team. So 
Talk to me about yeah. what you know about a little bit about those two guys and, you know, if you see them making a big time impact right away. Well, you, you got to love what Laranega went out and did. So in addition to getting a top 10 recruiting class and, and of course, the five star recruit, uh, which is the prize of the recruiting class that we'll talk about here. I mean, when you look at we have eight upperclassmen of those eight upperclassmen, Trig, six are working on their master's degrees. These upperclassmen yes. have played over 633 college basketball games. Five of the six transfers have tournament experience. Three of the Miami Hurricanes on this team have already passed 1,000 career points. That's Blackman, Cleveland, Nigel Pack. Two of them uh, are pretty darn close there. So we're talking about guys that are 22, 23 years old, these are, this is one of the most experienced teams in the country. And we all know Laranega over the last, I don't know what, four or five decades of coaching. Some of his best teams have always been when they are filled with dudes that are of the 21, 22, 23 range, upperclassmen across the board. You mix in some young talent and you have got yourself a very dangerous team. You mentioned Blackman. I mean, Blackman was the 10th highest scorer in the nation last year. 21.3 points per game. That's not going to change here. Uh, and Nigel Pack, again, totally injured last year. Every time we turned around, he's already been talking. Uh, I got a friend at the Miami Herald uh, is telling me he's in the best shape he's seen him. He feels he's 100%. Uh, healed, he is ready to go, and he said it's like really watching like a grown ass men's team playing some of these some of these kids, the younger guys. None of them, they all, because of the experience, it appears all of these upperclassmen that have come in, all of these guys have a really good sense of what Larinaga and the coaching team wants, and the experience, and you know this, Trig. In college basketball, especially now with the NIL deals and the turnover, having guys understand the footwork and where to be, especially early on in the season in some of these uh, tournaments that they're going to be in, I, I think they are already heads and tails with these guys above where a lot of the younger teams, the newer teams uh, who don't have as much experience are going to be. So I think Miami is going to make us quite a bit of money early on in the season here. Yeah, I want to talk about one other thing that I think makes Miami so much better from this year to, from, you know, this year's team as opposed to last year's team. You talked about the injuries and, and those can't go without being mentioned. But the shot selection for Miami last year was so horrifically bad. When you watch oh. them play, the shots that they took were terrible. And that should improve tenfold. So I want to go back to last year for one second. Y you lose Isaiah Wong, who was like just an incredible shot maker. Then you have, you know, I mentioned Omir kind of playing a little bit out of position, little undersized to mm -hmm. play the five. But the game that we, the, when we were in the Bahamas, you had Nigel Pack was pulling up from out of bounds to <laughs> making shots, which I think maybe was not the best thing because it felt like watching Miami. They just felt like they could just throw up whatever and it was going to go in. And once that started not happening, it, it wasn't a very pretty sight. I think that could be completely solved this year by... The front court, which is also new, which is two of those grad transfers you were talking about, Joe. Yep. Lynn Kidd from Virginia Tech, Brandon Johnson from East Carolina. Both of these guys are veteran players. They take great shots. Lynn Kidd yep. single-handedly gave Virginia Tech a front court last year. And Mike Young typically doesn't have like great bigs. He shot 66.8% from the field last year Whew. for Virginia Tech. Brandon Johnson from East Carolina is a veteran that takes great shots. Joe, do you, I, I mean, do you think that just having two guys in the post that take good shots and score at a high percentage, I, I feel like the possibilities are endless for this Miami offense. I agree. It was a thing that they lacked last year, uh, for sure, uh, Trig. They just did not have uh, the pieces, and especially as the injuries started to pile up, to be able to compete with what they were going to have to go up in, in the rest of the ACC. That's why I love what Laranega did. He addressed all of the weaknesses from a year ago. He brought in more experience, coupled it with the guys that he's already got coming back, right? Cleveland has already said that Lynn is probably the best big that I've ever played with. 
He said his touch, the footwork, he can shoot with either hand. Uh, he's coachable. I mean, these are the guys that, like, the core group that was there a year ago with Nigel and Cleveland. These guys absolutely love these upperclassmen, and especially Lynn, who, let's face it, it's been a while since Miami's had that kind of threat there in the paint like this. Uh, and somebody that it's not going to take him half a season to be able to get comfortable. I think that's the big thing here. They bring a wealth of experience, and they are certainly not going to be intimidated walking to any gym on the road or in a neutral site in a tournament. They are going to rack up some wins here uh, this season for sure. Yeah, and just one other comment I want to make about Kid. That Virginia Tech team defensively was a mm -hmm. total mess last year. So I don't even really yep. want to judge him on you know, like Virginia Tech was really like a disaster defensively. There was only so much he could do as like the big down there. It was right. it was not fully his fault, in my opinion. Put him next to Johnson. State McCray from from Samford is a fantastic defender. I think Miami's defense yep. gets better. And we're all built. We're building here, Joe, to like, what's the ceiling for this team? And can can we just bet them now? I can we bet them to win the ACC? I see, you know, I see a price range of 12 to 1 to 15 to 1. You take Virginia out yep. of the mix, which I don't think is fully factored in the line. Tony Bennett retires. That team has no chance. You have to go against Duke yep. or North in North Carolina, but this price range seems, you know, kind of appealing to me. Uh let's talk about the yep. ACC though, real quick, and the 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 schedules and the unbalanced schedules. Joe, every ACC team now is going to play seven home games seven road games, and you're going to get three teams twice. What that means, yep. none of these teams are going to play the same schedule. And where Miami, I think, benefits, the teams they play twice, Florida State, Virginia Tech, and Duke. Now, Duke's very good, mm -hmm. but Florida State and Virginia Tech could be the two two of the worst teams in the league. So I think you look at yep. the, the schedule and the price points. I don't know, Joe, are we going to bet this team to win the ACC? 13, 14 to 1 seems pretty uh pretty reasonable to me I, I love i mean listen they're gonna host clemson north carolina state notre dame smu syracuse virginia and wake that's going to be all at the wasco center here in miami they're heading to boston college cal georgia tech louisville north carolina pittsburgh and stanford so i i think this schedule lines up extremely well i love the non-conference games that they got set up too with the sec uh, Arkansas in the ACC SEC challenge coming up, uh, in the first week of December. They're going to be at the Jimmy V Classic. They're going to get Tennessee. So this is a schedule that's going to allow them to test themselves early, going to rack up some points here against some quality SEC opponents. And I think the schedule in the ACC, I, I mean, 22 to 25 wins here. Trig is not, uh, is not the thing. And you're going to face Duke in a home and home. Uh, home and away uh, format there. And really, if that's going to be the class of the ACC, well, you're going to have a pretty good idea on where you stand rather quickly, I think, with this Miami team. Yeah, I listen, Joe, I actually think this is a further price point in the 12 to 13, yep. 14 or one range. I think Miami to win the ACC is a fantastic bet. You know you're yep. going up against North Carolina and Duke as the, as the two favorite options, but that's fine. They're both, you know, what's one of them's like plus 150, plus 200. The other one's plus 400. The teams that are similarly priced to Miami, you can throw Virginia out. They're not winning this, the league this year. Okay. You've got Wake Forest, who I don't think plays enough defense to win this league. They're nope. going to be good, but I don't think they're going to be elite with the issues that they might have on defense. And then you have Louisville, who could be awesome, but is an entirely new team. So, you know, that, that's mm -hmm. roughly priced the same as Miami. You made a great point. The home game against Clemson is their first game. That's the yep. early ACC game, the one that's like the first week of December. The ACC yep. schedule for them is a home game against Clemson, followed by Boston College, Virginia Tech, Florida State, and then a home game against Wake Forest. BC, v, uh, yep. BC Virginia Tech, FSU could be the three worst teams in the league. So potentially Miami could be 5-0 and going in, into that first meeting with Duke. Home game against Clemson, the three worst teams in the league, home game against Wake Forest, and you're going to give us 15, yep. 14 to 1 on this team to win it all? Joe, I think yep. I think sign me up for that. I, I think that's a bet we have to make. Uh, I agree. I mean, uh, no more P.J. Hall on Clemson, no more Burns for NC State. I mean, you go down the list, Trig, a lot of these, uh, these, you know, 
uh, classic from a year ago. I mean, everyone fell in love with NC State, but that team is not is a shell of what they were a year ago. So is Clemson. North Carolina uh, has got a couple of interesting pieces back with Davis and company, but it's it's really to me Duke is the is the top of the class. I think Wake Forest is interesting, but I don't think they're ever going to play enough defense to be serious. And then there's Miami at a price point to your, you know, with what you're saying makes absolutely no sense to me, given the experience and the mix of young guys that they brought in along with the transfers and the three holdovers from a year ago. This is classic Laranaga is what it's setting up for. Yeah. And we know, I mean, you know, as good as anyone being a Miami fan, go back to a couple of years ago when Laranaga gets his yeah. team rolling. I mean, he's done it his whole career where he's gotten Miami teams yep. rolling. They pick up a, a head of steam and that schedule, you know, you talked about the Arkansas game. That's a home game, right? Like that's what, that's an yep. early season non-conference home game. The Clemson game yep. early in the season is home. It really sets up for them to have a whole bunch of momentum going into the Duke game and then into the, like, the later yep. portion of their schedule. Yeah, I, I think yep. that's a, a play we're going to have to make, Joe. And and. As we wrap up this preview, I don't know how you couldn't be bullish on this Miami team this year. No. And, and listen, if the kid, uh, Jaleel Bethea, who was a five-star recruit out of Archbishop Wood in Pennsylvania, and all the reports that I'm hearing, uh, Trig, is this kid is no joke. I mean, he's a 6'4 guard. He averaged 23 points, seven and a half boards, and three and a half assists a game in his senior year. He was the Gatorade Player of the Year. He started for the East team in the McDonald's All-American game. And he is uh, was rated, I believe, the third best shooting guard in uh, at a high school in uh, 2024. I mean, this kid is the real deal. The fact that Laranaga got him to come here and the fact that uh, him and, and he'll be able to learn from these upperclassmen like Nigel Pack, uh, being a 6'4 guard, that can drop if he lives up to it or at least comes into his own as the season progresses. This, there's a ton of points on this team here, Treg. The kid is going to be an absolute beast. And he's got a bunch of guys that understand IQ basketball wise surrounding this kid, which will only make him better and faster during the season. All right, that's our preview. I think that's the first actual like futures bet I've given out on one of these or we've yeah. given out. I really like that. I think that should absolutely be, you know, in your portfolio in some fashion. Um Has but to. yeah, we'll we'll call it right there. I think I think yep. Miami's a team you can look to back this year. And uh we'll leave it right there. Thank you to my guest, Joe Ranieri, normally host, but my guest for this. And um Check out all of our previews. We've got a whole bunch of them over at the Wager Talk YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe and go see all those previews uh, that we have in a nice playlist over there. Uh, a whole bunch of good information as we lead up to tip off on November 4th. And check out the special I have. It's Trig CBB, coupon code Trig CBB, entire college basketball season for the lowest rate that we're going to offer all season long. That's up now on my page, wt.buzz slash AT, and you get that huge discount by using coupon code Trig. CBB. Thank you guys for joining. Appreciate it as always. Check out the other previews and we'll see you guys next time.